Hey guys, thanks for checking out my video. We're at the end of day three now, start of day four, so it's time for another update on the build. Uh, I made it to level 95. Build is feeling really, really good. Here's the things I'm going to talk about in this video. I'm going to try to keep it as short as possible, but there's kind of a lot of stuff I want to talk about. But first things first, I'm going to do a map showcase, show you what the build's looking like. Uh, I'm going to run this Crystal Ore with Maven. I'm doing uh, Destructive Play right now, so we'll do this with uh, Maven Influence on my uh, Destructive Play tree, which I'll talk a little bit more about later. You guys can see what the build is looking like. I got my additional strike, uh, and my damage is still pretty good on a five link. Oh, well, we're having some uh, visual glitch stuff going on here. So on this strategy, I'm pretty much not quite boss rushing, but I'm kind of trying to clear the map as fast as possible uh, because this strategy is all about maximizing boss kills. Uh, so this map is kind of annoying, but I'll try to clear it as fast as I can. And you do have to kill, clear most of the map on this strategy with Destructive Play. Uh, otherwise, Maven won't summon as many bosses. A lot of people have asked me, how do I stay alive? How do I stay alive? You know, I die too much. I'm too squishy, etc. One thing I will recommend to you is if you have the Shock Ascendancy node, use Vol Lightning Strike a lot. Vol Lightning Strike is very OP for stacking Shock. I'm going to talk a little bit more about that later. If you come across any rare that even survives longer than one second, drop that VLS and then also use Avatar a lot. Avatar uh, is extremely OP. Don't be afraid. Don't be hesitant to use your Avatar a lot. Every rare you come across, every essence, just pop that Avatar and permafreeze that sucker. All right, so here's the boss. Map's pretty much done. And I get to the boss. I already popped my Avatar, so I'm not going to have that up. But I'll just drop my Vol Lightning Strike. And we'll kill all these bosses here. We do have a uh, big old boss AOE here. I might die. Hopefully not. There's one down. Another one down. And one more left. And there you go. All the all the extra bosses down. Survive that explosion there. I'll pick up my nice uh, boss drops here. And a little uh, depressor squire for me. And there you go. Map's done. Build is feeling awesome. Uh, mapping is very, very smooth. Um, I've been dying very, very rarely since I got it to this point. Uh, so there's a map showcase. Now I'm going to talk about a bunch of stuff. First, Knee Rocks. I thought this was very, very cool. This guy, Knee Rocks, came into my stream last night and he said, brought your build to Trade League's first level 100 warden, another league on Frostblades. And I went, you can go to Pewee Racing and see this yourself. This guy was the very first level 100 warden of the league, and he did it playing Frostblades Warden. Pretty cool for a, a build that Reddit said was uh, unplayable bait trash, right? So anyway, I just thought that was pretty cool. Uh, ailment immunity. I got ailment immunity on the build, and I got that by having a roll on the chest, a roll on the shield, and a roll on the boots. The boot mod has to come from a loathing essence, that's the only way to get it on boots, as far as I understand. You can also get it on um, the implicit. If your other rolls are lower, you can get the avoid ailments on the eater, icker, implicit. I don't have that because I don't need it. Uh, but if you got it high enough, you could drop the the craft here. Or uh, The only reason I'm able to do it without it is because I have this really high 30 chance on the shield. If I had a lower tier there, I would probably need the implicit to reach ailment immunity. But we have 100% ailment avoidance, which is nice. And then you also need the thick skin wheel on the tree to get the, the last bit of the ailment avoidance. So ailment avoidance is pretty important. And once you do get ailment avoidance, you no longer need to rely on the Brine King Pantheon. You can switch to Solaris, which I think is the best one. It's very, very strong. It gives you elemental damage reduction. And you get a sort of pseudo crit immunity. You can't be crit twice in a row. Uh, which is very, very nice. This this makes a big difference. So get your Pantheon done, guys. Especially if you're having problems dying. Implicits are almost done. I got my additional strike. I'm still missing the pierce there, though, which will allow me to swap the craft to something else. I got Fortify in my chest. Uh, hit cold damage and settled for it. I, I'm going to change that to crit multi later. I don't have anything on my helmet because those implicits aren't, aren't super impactful. And then I hit Brittle on the boots, which two-second Brittle is uh, just barely impactful. Like, ideally, end game you want four- or five-second Brittle, so you can uh, put it down and it lasts longer. If you guys don't know how to use Brittle, 
you can whirling blades to put brittle down. So if you're fighting something, you hit it, hit it, hit it, whirling blades across it, and it will drop the brittle, and then you can frost blink back to where you were. That's what I like to do. Hit, 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 whirling blades, frost blink back, and then you, you'll put the brittle down. That's a pretty good way to keep brittle on the targets you're fighting. And the frost blink will also keep your bone shield down, which is uh, it's kind of a double whammy. You can get them both at the same time really quickly. Uh, and then that's it for the implicits. Hey, I just realized I forgot to cover my gear in the video, so I'm going to edit this in real quick if I can. My gear sucks. I have a claw with no crit on it, no heat shiver, no taming, crappy ring with, with life dex, int strength, another ring with chaos res, res, this ring's okay. I made a nice chest, still on a 5 link by the way, no taming, no heat shiver, no 6 link, no lethal pride, uh, avoid ailments, chaos res, big evasion here, uh, gloves are chaos res, suppression life, res, with pierce, haven't hit the implicit yet on the pierce, belt is chaos res, 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 life. Boots are just ailment avoidance and life. These boots are bad. I'll get better ones later. Shield is suppression avoid ailments with int, uh, amulet, uh, dex, life, res, damage. Not very good. Uh, I got a jewel with life, attack, speed, and blind. It's pretty good. Uh, I think that's it for my gear. I forgot to cover it in the rest of the video, so I'm going to try to edit this in. Uh, the Warden Shock Node. Let's talk about that for a minute. People are asking me a lot, what about the shock node? How are you using the shock node? How good is it? Blah, blah, blah. If you have a pure cold and fizz setup with cold to fire, or if you're just, you have a heat shiver, then you're not going to have that much lightning damage. You need to have some lightning damage somewhere, right? Like I have some here and a little bit more on both my rings, but it's not very much. If you don't have this node, then you're going to get really, really small baby shocks, and your shocks are not going to be very good. If you take this node, though, you can get up to like 20, 25, 30 shock with just your frost blades alone. Uh, and then if you use Vol Lightning Strike on top, Vol Lightning Strike, the only reason I'm using this is to ramp up shocks, okay, shock, shock stacks. If you use Vol Lightning Strike with returning projectiles, you put it down when you fight something and you can get to 100 shock. You can get to full stacks of shock. It's very, very strong, okay. I like this a lot, uh, so that's what I'm doing for now. Uh, what's next? Shock node, Vol Pact and Automated Blood Rage. Uh, Vault Pact is in the POBs. It's kind of an option, though. You guys don't have to take this. It's a feel thing. If you're going to go Vault Pact, I recommend you, at, at a minimum, have Ailment Immunity and Corrupted Blood Immunity because ailments and you know bleed will destroy you if you have Vault Pact because you can't use a Life Flask. Okay, Try it out. See if you like it. The recovery is very nice, but it's, uh, it's an option. It just costs one more point, which is this point right here, and then you take your Leech from here and you drop the Clever Thief Wheel. Okay? Uh, so try it out. See if you like it. Uh, it's not for everybody. And then another thing about Blood Rage. Some people have said, I'm using Vault Pact, but my Blood Rage is just constantly killing me. First thing, do not put Blood Rage with automation. I think I had it in the POB because I just happened to link it with Steel Scan automation. You don't have to automate Blood Rage, guys. There's no reason to do that. Uh, and you want to have Blood Rage in your shield or your weapon and make sure your auras are not in your shield or weapon so that you can weapon swap it off really quick. So you, you're fighting a boss or something and it phases, weapon swap, turn it off. Just like that. Okay, that way your blood rage doesn't degen you all the way down to nothing. Set it up like that so you can just quickly turn it on and off whenever you need to. Okay. Trinity and Scorch. I made a video about Trinity the other day to explain it. If you have any questions about Trinity, ch check out my channel. Go find that video from two days ago and watch that video. Uh, if you have a Heat Shiver, you shouldn't be using Trinity. You should be getting all your fire damage from Heat Shiver, and that should be enough to Scorch. If you don't have Heat Shiver yet, you can just do a Cold to Fire setup with the Pure Fizz and Cold Claw, like I am, and you'll get nice Scorches. Okay, that's all you need. Tinctures. People are asking me a lot about the Tincture node. What do I think about it? How good are they? Blah, blah, blah. Tinctures are very, very strong. I'm using this one with damage and attack speed. We lost the attack speed roll on Flask, by the way, guys. We learned that. That role got deleted somehow. Ninja deleted. It wasn't in the patch notes. Very unfortunate. So the attack speed role on the tinctures is just became even more powerful because of that. Uh, I'm still playing around with the tinctures. I'm kind of learning and practicing how to use them. It's very different than like traditional flasks. Uh, so the tincture node here, though, is very, very powerful. Uh, it will help you sustain the tincture effect for very much longer. And the tinctures are very, very strong. Also, if you have the points or you can drop something, taking practice reapplication with uh, either the first six mana burns have no effect or the deactivate after 12. I'm not, it's kind of unclear to me which one would be a better choice. I think the first six mana burns one would probably be better because that would just keep you let you get it up, keep it up for like eight, ten seconds, almost guaranteed. And then uh, if you took this node, then you'd have like almost 80, 90 percent uptime. 
just right from that. If you want it, try it out, see if you like it. I'm still using the shock node for now because it's it's working for me. It's doing really good damage. Um, so yeah, mana cost. If you're having problems with mana cost uh, because the Frostblade's mana cost got increased, make sure you have the 15% taken as life mastery or uh, mana cost as life mastery, this one right here. That'll help. And then use inspiration if you have a six link. Uh, if, you, if you have a six link, your mana cost is going to be really high. Put on a inspiration gem in there. That should help. Or you can use non-channeling skills have minus mana cost too. That's an option. Or you can do both. You need to you need to feel it out for yourself. See how much extra mana you have. If you aren't able to sustain your frost blades very well, or if you if you run out of mana all the time and you can't frost blink because you have no mana, uh, then uh, put on a put on a minus mana craft, and that should make it feel a lot smoother. Okay. Anoints. I get a lot of questions about defiled forces. Okay. I put defiled forces in the pob. The reason that Defiled Forces is in the POB is because we were teased that you could get additional curse on a one hand, on a weapon enchant. Okay, do not anoint Defiled Forces unless you have an additional curse, guys. If you do not have an additional curse, Defiled Forces is going to do almost nothing, and you also have to have a source of Ellie Weakness. Okay, you need to do a get additional curse with Ellie Weakness somehow, either with Curse on Hit on a ring. Or on an Arcanist brand, which was probably what I would do. Put it on an Arcanist brand with your Frost Bomb, maybe, or even maybe not, so that it constantly gets applied. That is how you're going to shock the stack, or stack the shocks, okay? The whole point of that is to stack shocks. It was just a, just a theory crafting thing. We never got to test it, really. So don't just willy-nilly anoint Defiled Forces unless you understand what it does and why you're anointing it and how to take advantage of it, okay, guys? Uh, if... In the meantime, just anoint Divine Judgment. That's what I'm doing. I'm an SSF, so I'm starved for oils anyway. But Divine Judgment is a very cheap, very strong anoint. You can also anoint Rage, which is a pretty good option too. Veteran's Wrath. Okay. Another option I'm thinking about for later is trying out uh, anointing Static Blows for duration of shock. This will help you stack up your shocks a lot more smoothly as well for big damage. Uh, so... Choose your anoint carefully, guys, okay? There's some, there's some niche, you know, context stuff needed with anoints. Don't just willy-nilly uh, anoint crap, okay? Atlas strategy. What I'm doing on my first atlas was just Betrayal, Harvest, and Essence. This was mainly an XP strat with Betrayal. That's how I got to level 95, was farming a lot of safe houses. And then uh, Harvest to stack up the Harvest Juice. That helped me craft my gear and do res swaps and stuff. And then uh, Essence, you know, obviously Essences are just good for crafting. And then um, my second atlas, I haven't even done anything yet. I'm going to do a legion atlas here to farm my lethal pride. Haven't started doing that yet. And then my third atlas, I set it up for destructive play. This is so I can farm uh, boss guardian conquerors uh, to get my maven invitations done, get my maven splinters, and uh, also with uh, meticulous appraiser for more unique drops. This is uh, also a heat shiver, heat shiver farming strategy. Please, 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 let me get a heat shiver drop, please. Uh, so that's what I'm doing with my Atlas. And then uh, my thoughts on the League mechanic is uh, I don't really know yet. I'm withholding judgment. Uh, you need so much gold to do everything. I'm trying to min-max my town still. I don't have it min-maxed at all. Uh, but I like the idea. Uh, I'm uh, I'm into it, you know. I got to play it more. I got to farm a bunch of gold and get the stuff upgraded and see how smooth it runs and see what kind of loot we get from it. What else? I think that's about it. Yeah, the character's feeling really good. Uh, I did a formed last night on stream that had 107 quant, uh, and I did it without dying at all, uh, which was pretty insane for a, you know, super squishy, unplayable build. I made a whole video about how to stay alive on this build too, uh, last league that all the defenses had, had nothing to do with trickster. So they're all perfectly applicable to this build. I'll, I'll link that video down in the description. If you guys want some more insight on how to stay alive, if you're having squishy problems, go watch that video. Make sure you're doing everything that's in that video. Okay, I think that's it for this one. Uh, I'm having a lot of fun. I'm going to keep streaming. I'm about to go on vacation, so I'll be gone for a few days. But after that, I'll be back for another whole week of blasting. Follow the stream at twitch.tv slash dishpoe. And I uh, hope you guys are having fun. I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.